Hey, it's Greg from Cutting Edge Stencils, and today we're going to transform this cement patio with our Diamant Tile Stencil. I'm going to go over it step by step, so stick with me so you can do your own project. We're going to begin right now. Okay, first step is preparation. We're going to leaf blow this patio, get all the leaves and dust and dirt off. Then we're going to come in and do a little wash on it, but I'm going to start with the blower. Okay, I blew all the leaves off here. Now I'm going to do a quick little cleaning on it. I'm going to use some of this driveway and concrete cleaner. I'm going to mix it with some water, dilute it. Just follow the instructions on the manufacturer's recommendations here. And I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to give it a quick little scrub, let it dry thoroughly, and we'll be ready to base coat. Okay, we're going to base coat, but before we do, we want to mask off any surfaces that we do not want to paint. I've got this wall here. That's what I'm going to do. Just going to use some two inch tape and I'm going to mask this off and we'll be protected and ready to base coat. Okay, we're about to base coat this cement patio. A couple things I'd like to talk to you about. One, the paint. We're going to use an exterior Ben. Ben flat sheen. Flat sheen because it allows us to stencil more quickly because the stencil paint will dry more quickly because it's got a porosity. It's porous, the flat paints. It'll drink up the stencil paint. It'll flash off or dry very quickly and allow us to move on to our next print. Another thing I want to talk to you about is nap of the roller. Uh, I would use at least a half inch nap roller. That's the thickness of the hair on or the fur on the roller. This is going to give you a little bit of texture here, but it's going to go into your texture of your cement patio. If you use a roller that's too smooth, you're not going to get into all these little nooks and crannies. One more thing, don't break your back. You take either a broom handle if you don't have an extension pole, and these uh, handles for the roller handles are set up, and you can just screw in your broom handle or extension pole, and now you can do your whole project standing up. Check that out. Look at that. So easy. Let's paint. To ensure that you're going to get right into the edge here, get a two inch brush, load it up with some paint, and you can cut in the edge. This uh, will allow you to get in with your roller and get really close with uh, making sure that you get everything into the corner. Okay, our Diamant tile stencil. It has this element here of triangular sections here in between the diamonds. Now we decided we wanted to simplify this patio a little bit, so we actually want to eliminate these triangular sections. So here's an easy way to do that. Just take your roll of tape and we are going to mask out the triangular sections so they are not stencils. Can you see what I'm doing here? Just mask these out. So you can modify any stencil you have, simplify them by just isolating or masking out particular areas and customize your stencil. Okay, we're going to put a little spray adhesive on the back of the stencil. This should help hold it in place while we're doing our stenciling. Any good repositionable spray adhesive should work fine. I've got some right here, some tacky spray. Here's the deal. Spray it outside. You don't want to smell this. And just do a nice even coat like so. Put a couple of coats on here. I would say two coats like this. Then we're going to let it dry for about two minutes. It'll become what we call knuckle tack, and that's where it's just tacky enough to stick to the back of your knuckle, but not too wet that it transfers to the surface. Let's get stenciling. Okay, we're starting the project. I like to start in the corner and then work my way out. Let the pattern bleed into the outside edges because I'd like this to be perfectly lined up in the corners. So I've got a 16 inch repeat on my extra large stencil. So instead of trying to jam my stencil in the corner for the first one, I'm gonna do the first one off the edge 16 inches and then carry it out and I'll save the corner for later when I can cut the stencil and I'll show you that. So what I'm gonna do is measure 16 inches out. I'm gonna make a little pencil mark, 16, okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here, 16 inches out, 
and I'll make a little mark here. And then I'm going to just check this and do 16. So this is my 16 out from both sides. I'm going to put a little X right here. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. And then this way, I'm going to place my stencil, bending it into this corner because I want my repeat to start right in the corner. So I'm going to line up the corner of this stencil with this mark here, 16, and I'm going to line this corner up with this 16. And that's going to be my first print. I'm going to bend it in the corner like that. My spray adhesive is helping here, and we are ready to start. Okay, we've got our stencil positioned off the corner. This way we'll be able to start without having to bend in this crazy corner here. I'm using rock gray, Benjamin Moore, flat paint. You can use an interior or exterior paint here, depending on the color. Your exterior paint is gonna give you better UV protection. So if I was using brighter colors like reds or jewel tones or something like that, I would definitely want to opt for a exterior version of this paint. We're using Ben and we are using a flat sheen. I've got a dense foam roller here and I'm gonna load that. And be conscious not to get paint on all of the edges and everywhere. And then we're going to go right in. I got a little heavier load here than usual because I have some texture to deal with. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to start stenciling and look how fast look how easy this is let me go back for a little bit more paint and you want to have a medium pressure in this case and these little sections here can you see these little sections this is for alignment you want to do those and you're going to align your stencil with that as we move on. You can use your fingers to push down the stencil a little bit to help get into the corners and edges. Look at that, right in there. And if you want to get all these little low spots here, all the nooks and crannies here, you can use a stencil brush. I would recommend something like an inch and a half stencil brush. I'm going to load the brush like this and you would use a vertical pouncing technique. And this way you can quickly come in and get all of your little nooks and crannies with your inch and a half brush. Look at that, super easy, done. And now we're gonna pull the stencil and see what we've got here. Okay. Ready? Let's see what we've got. Okay, our registration marks. That's this little triangle here, and that's what it is here. So what we want to do is we want to lay this right on top of that little triangle and line this up with the tip of this diamond. And that's how the registration system works. Now we push this down, and we're ready for our next print. Okay, let's continue on with the project. Just a light to medium pressure first. And we'll get right into those edges. Don't forget those registration triangles. That's how you're gonna keep moving forward. And I'm going a little bit lighter here. We've got some texture. When you're working on a textured surface stenciling, it's never gonna be perfect, but you can get it really nice. And when you look at it from a distance, your eye is just seeing the pattern. So don't worry about a little bit of bleed or a little bit of a rough edge. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna grab my inch and a half stencil brush in a second here. I'm gonna just quickly hit these little nooks and crannies in the texture. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna load a little bit up on my brush and I'm just going to pounce straight up and down Knock some of those white areas back. It's that easy. This is super simple, anybody can do it. Just use a couple of these basic techniques and you'll get a great result. All right, see that? Got most of my white knocked back here. And then 
I'll pull this stencil off and we'll just keep moving forward with the project. Let's do that. Let's pull this off. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, looking great. Let's keep moving on. Okay, after you do all of your stenciling, do a few touch-ups. Take your base coat color and a little what we call a fitch. This brush is a little artist fitch and it's very handy. I come in with a little bit and why don't you come down here and take a look. You see how we've got a little bit of a, uh, an over stencil here? I just take my base coat color and look at that, it's straightened right out. So that's, it. that's just how easy it is. I'm gonna go around the whole project, do a couple of quick touch-ups before I top coat. Okay, we're done with our beautiful stencil project here, and now it's time to protect our artwork. We want to use a water-based spar varnish. Spar refers to exterior, and what that means is you're going to have better UV protection. It's going to keep your artwork from fading better. Okay, so what we want to do is at least two coats of this, and how we do that is we'll use a cut brush like this to do the perimeter of the project. We'll paint the, uh, we'll put the clear coat on the perimeter of the project. We'll do two coats, then we'll come in with a half inch nap roller, and we will, with an extension pole so you don't break your back, and we will do two coats of our water-based poly. Mm -hmm. 